The human brain is one of our largest and most complex organs, and for good reason. It is made up of over a hundred billion nerves which communicate in trillions of connections known as synapses. Every action we take or thought we conjure up originates from the brain, and its mastery over our sensory organs makes it arguably the most important organ in the human body. So given how capable our brains appear to be, why would we even consider interfacing them with a computer or any other machine? Now before we continue, I'd like you all to know I post new videos on Sundays every week, so please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting content. We talked about inorganic transhumanism in an earlier video, and I explained that for us as a species to evolve beyond our current capacities, we would need to incorporate the technologies we've developed into our bodies. There are quite a few definitions of brain-computer interfaces out there, but I refer to them as a pathway which allows communication between a brain and a machine. I like this definition because even though we see applications where patients use these interfaces to control prosthetics, these devices could also be used to influence or even directly control the actions of a person. More on that later. Brain-computer interfaces work by recording neural data from our brains. The number of neurons simultaneously recorded using wired electrodes, for example, has doubled every seven years since the 1950s, currently allowing electrical observation of hundreds of neurons at a time. This recorded data usually represents a question, an answer, or an intention. In the case of a prosthetic arm, the user causes actuation by simply thinking it, and by doing so, sends his intention across. If a group of people were asked a question, say, what their favorite food was, and were given a set of options to choose from, their brain activity during the question and answer phase could be recorded by a brain-computer interface, allowing the system to guess what each person would choose when they repeated the test, simply by comparing their brain activities from prior tests. Primarily, there are two methods by which brain-computer interfacing can be achieved. The first being non-invasive interfacing, which closely follows the principles of electroencephalography. For those who may not know, electroencephalography is a method of monitoring and recording the electropsychological activity of the brain. This is done by attaching multiple electrodes to the scalp of the patient, which measure voltage fluctuations caused by ionic current within the neurons of the brain. The second, as you might suspect, is the invasive method and it involves the surgical implantation of a device into the skull of the user. Now, although this method might sound a tad gory, which, to be honest, it is, the quality of signal data it can collect is far better than the non-invasive systems available today. That's why most brain-computer interfaces which afford a user precise control of a prosthetic, like say a robotic arm or a leg, require some form of surgical brain implant. I will note that of recent, researchers at Carnegie Mellon University demonstrated what they say is the first non-invasive mind-controlled robotic arm. So yeah, it's very likely we will see non-invasive systems eventually catch up to their invasive counterparts. As you might imagine, the applications of such a technology are quite numerous. Today we are seeing rudimentary applications for these systems in prosthesis and speech detection. But as research continues, these applications are set to grow exponentially in the next couple of years. In the field of medicine, these systems could be used as a means of preventing vehicular accidents by actively monitoring the concentration levels of drivers and alerting them when they go below acceptable levels. They could also be used to restore neural pathways, which may have been damaged due to stroke, allowing these patients to regain speech or even full mobility. Brain-computer interfaces will bring a whole new meaning to smart environments and the Internet of Things. Today you have to send out commands from your phone or some kind of remote to control your smart devices. But sometime in the future, turning on your thermostat will be as simple as thinking it. Also, mentally summoning your self-driving car to the driveway before you step out of the house sounds pretty neat if you ask me. In the field of marketing, brain-computer interfaces could be used to monitor the brain activity of everyday people while they surf the internet, watch a movie, or read the news. The data acquired would then be processed and used to show them highly personalized ads. This particular application is the main reason Facebook are working on their own brain-computer interface. So if you thought Mark spamming your Facebook page with ads about stuff you don't want was annoying, buckle up because he's about to monetize your thoughts as well. 
Security systems of today utilize some form of knowledge, object, or outward biometric authentication, and these have proven to be vulnerable to theft and hacking. A biometric system which utilizes our unique brain activity, or should I say, a neural print, would not only provide a secure authentication method, which cannot be casually acquired by external observers, it would also provide a reliable means of authentication for people with disabilities. Up until this point, we've considered the potential benefits of controlling machines or software using BCIs. But what could be achieved if these systems were used to influence or even modify our neural activities? People could communicate across the world by directly sharing their thoughts with others, thereby making language barriers a thing of the past. Virtual reality games and movies will become truly immersive, as developers and producers will be able to make the audience see, smell, and even feel the virtual environments they create. Regular people like you and I would be able to integrate additional sensory organs to our bodies, like say a third eye, which would be capable of seeing ultraviolet light or thermal signatures. The use cases are not all positive though. Corporations could one day use the BCIs attached to our heads to influence or monitor our interests, opinions, and emotions without us ever noticing. Hackers and rural governments could outright use this technology to control the actions of people remotely, or even kill them. I don't know about you, but I'm truly frightened by the idea that one day I might not be able to trust my own thoughts and feelings on a particular topic due to fear of external manipulation. BCIs are an ethical minefield right now, and governments around the world are still struggling to come up with proper regulations for them due to how rapidly the technology is developing. It is somewhat reassuring, however, that some major companies appear to be transparent about their research into the field, but there are hundreds more across the globe that are keeping their work close to the chest for one reason or the other. Bottom line is, we simply cannot overlook the sheer impact such a technology will have on the human race. So let's hope for the best, but also prepare for the worst. <laughs>